unemployment induced by the crisis is likely to turn out to be stubbornly high because it's in part structural. And before the crisis, it was sort of hidden from view or overcome by some unusual forces that are not sustainable. In the study of the evolving structure of the American economy and the employment problem, we looked at employment over a 18-year period coming up to 2008, just before the crisis, and we looked at value added um, sector by sector, and we looked at value added per person. And we divided the economy as carefully as we could into a tradable and a non-tradable part. So the tradable part is goods and services that can be produced in one country and consumed in another. And the non-tradable side, which is the lion's share of the economy, you know, in most advanced economies, is is a whole set of goods and services that have to be produced domestically, like government, health care, construction, etc. Uh, much of legal services because of legal differences uh, in the systems across countries. So when we looked at this, that the net employment um, generation in the American economy was impressive. It was 27 million jobs, but all almost all of it was in the non-tradable side. Uh, so that meant basically there was negligible employment growth on the on the tradable side of the of the economy where we compete with other people. When we looked at value added, the picture is very different. Overall value added increased on both sides of the economy. Uh, and what and when and when you look at specifically at the tradable sector, what you find is that it divides into two parts. There's a part you know, a, a set of sectors like finance, like consulting, like computer design. And in those sectors, value added increased, employment increased, and value added per person increased. So it's all good. You could say those are sectors in which we were highly competitive. The second set is, are, are, tend to be what we call ma manufacturing. Uh, and they are long value added chains that can be decomposed and moved around the global economy. And what happened there is that employment went down but value added went up. So value added per person went up enormously and what was going on in those sectors is that the lower value added per person parts are moving to other parts of the global economy and the, and the, other, the upper parts, you know, the design, the managing the, the enterprise and so on, um, that's highly educated people, they're growing, they're competing in the global economy. And then when you net out the declines in the manufacturing sector against the growth in the others, you get this, almost, you know, approximate match. Very little, 600,000 jobs out of 27 million. And nearly all of them, you know, all but 600,000 of them were in the non-tradable sector. And then when you look closely at that, what you discover is that we had big growth in government, in health care, and substantial growth in other labor-intensive sectors like construction, retail, um, hotels, food services, restaurants, that sort of thing. And, and we had, of course, excess consumption, you know, for kind of 10 years at least coming into the, the crisis because we were, had an asset bubble. We, were, we thought we were rationally consuming some of our wealth each year, only it wasn't, turned out not to be real. So I think those are, the, those are the factors that allowed us to absorb all the incremental employment needs of the population in the non-tradable side. And I, and I think my own opinion is it's that very unlikely, you know, to be a sustainable trend. The tradable sector needs to be a healthy growing part of an economy in terms of uh, value added, you know, output and employment. Uh, you can't just keep relying on the non-tradable sector to absorb all the incremental employment in an economy like the United States. I mean, crisis clearly created unemployment. I think these underlying structural problems are going to make it difficult to solve the employment problem without addressing the structural issues as well. It's an issue that affects the, uh, the range of employment options for people in the middle income category. You know, moderate levels of education, but not the top, middle income as a result, mid-range of sort of variety of kinds of skills. So that's why there's this sort of tension and concern on the part of a substantial group of people that employment opportunities are declining. In many ways, I think it's a miracle we didn't have an unemployment problem. 
you know, given the magnitude of the of the non-job creation on the tradable side, so the trade the non-tradable side absorbed all these people, but I, I don't think it's a good bet that that will happen in the future. In our case, youth unemployment is a, 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 a feature of the crisis because the youth tend to come into the market and be at the end of the queue. And the concern is if there's a dramatic shortage of employment opportunities, you'll, you know, lots of people have said this, and I think it's right, that, you know, if you find people who come out of school, say high school, and don't find a job for four or five or six years, and then the markets finally come back, they, you tend to lose them. You know, employers will go for the recent graduates. So it's a very worrying uh, situation, both economically and socially. In an ideal global economy where, where resources are mobile, we now have res goods and services that are mobile when they can be traded. We have capital that's highly mobile, but labor's not. In a, you know, in a domestic economy, if there's a surplus labor condition here and a labor shortage here, you know, then one of two things happens. The jobs, you know, the people move to the jobs or the jobs move to the people. And usually it's a combination of both. In the global economy, uh, the people can't move to the jobs. There's just too many barriers to mobility. And, and some of the jobs are non-tradable, so that means that the, the jobs can't move to the people. And so we have a situation in which there's a natural sort of economic answer, which is mobility. <laughs> of jobs and people, you know, and, and we can't implement that solution for reasons that are, you know, largely social and practical. I, I think the, the answer to this is, is, is not obvious, but we're going to have to try to fix the ineffective parts of our educational system. We're under-investing in things like infrastructure, and, and sort of across the board, if you look at the numbers for the investment rates in the United States, we've just been living on consumption. And we need to live a little bit more on investment, including public sector investment. We should have a sensible energy policy. Um, we should build some infrastructure which has the, the effect, productive infrastructure, I might add, which has the effect of employing people in the short run and raising the return to certain kinds of private sector investment in the long run, that being the driving engine. I think we should fix the tax system. It's it's complicated as loopholes, and it's not particular. It has distortions with respect to investment. It privileges housing, you know, and builds up asset prices, you know, creating jobs in the in the construction industry, but not the kind we're talking about. It's, and it's non-tradable. Um, we we tax uh, earnings from abroad when they're repatriated, so we've created an incentive to leave them out there and investment out there. Some of that would occur anyway because, you know, the other parts of the world are growing. And so it's natural for our multinationals to invest out there. But still, why tip the, why tip the playing field, in, you know, against us in, in that sense? So I think there is a structural issue underlying this that needs attention. Um, on the, I think it's going to actually take, a, a, you know, a, a new policy framework that pays attention to structure and distribution and opportunity. And I think in order to make sensible, pragmatic progress, it'll require uh, cooperation between the business sector and government.